Howard Cosell on NBC with TS back in the 1970s. Joining us now from New York to talk about Howard for a bit and then review the world, here is veteran author, columnist, and newspaper editor Pete Hamill, whose book, A Drinking Life, is out now in paperback. Pete, it's good to see you across the miles, and thanks for coming on tonight. And wonderful to hear Cosell's voice. Did you know Cosell at all? I certainly did. I met him in uh, 1968 while I was covering uh, the Olympics in Mexico City. Uh, we met as befitted Howard at the bar the pre in the press section at uh, one of the events. And he said to me, Pete Hamill, the only guy from Brooklyn <laughs> who never chased me down Eastern Parkway. And I said, okay. <laughs> And then a, a couple of days later, at the time, I thought of him as a, you know, as an announcer of some kind. You know, I didn't realize he was a phenomenon because a few days later, Tommy Smith and Lee Evans, I guess it were, the two black athletes who made a protest at the Olympics by, by giving a black power salute on the medal stand. When it was all over, the great mob of us were all waiting, po pencils poised, pads in our hands. They came off the stand, went right past all of us, maybe a thousand of us, straight to Howard Cosell. I knew, <laughs> I knew the world had changed, that the print guys had been left in the dust, and Howard was uh, triumphant. I got to know him after that, by the way, and, 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 and liked him very much. He, uh, um, he, could get, he was a terrific drinker, and uh, when I quit uh, and retired with the title, as I said at the time, uh, <laughs> We continued to off to meet, and he could get very nasty late at night, um, accusing most of the human race of being beneath his even his consideration even for for condemnation. Uh, and I could always get him off that by just saying one number to him. I'd say forty-two, and he would say Jack Roosevelt Robinson, the greatest ball player who ever walked the face of this, and he would go in to Jackie Robinson, who was his greatest hero. And there was something about Robinson and Brooklyn in the 40s that shaped uh, Cosell in very profound ways and I think was at the heart of everything, the good and the bad. Some people didn't like uh, the arrogance and the humility, but I loved it because just like Muhammad Ali, and I think it was why they were kindred spirits, it was always done with a wink. Yep. It was not done to squash anybody uh, beneath his toe. It was, there was a wink attached to it. Yeah, Howard got being Howard. There's no question about that. No question right. about that. Right. Let me ask, here my, uh, here, ask you here, my friend, about the events of the last six, seven days out in Oklahoma City. You know, a lot of Americans are wondering, you know, what the hell is going on in this country? Uh, what is this coming to when we see innocent people blown out of existence by somebody with a vengeance against the government of the United States or, or, or perceived or imagined demons? What's, what's your take on this? What's happening here? And are you satisfied that by going after right-wing extremists, the Justice Department and the FBI, FBI are, in truth, going down the right road? Well, I think they are in this particular narrow case. They, they sure know a lot more about it than I do, and I think they're on the track of these specific people who committed this specific crime. But I do think that this is part of a whole other gun culture which has not been addressed yet. People won't really take seriously the idea that there's something bizarre about a country having these goofballs marching around in the woods in camouflage uh, uniforms carrying AK-47s and pretending to be men. Were you ever there's in something were, demented about were that. Were you ever in the service, Pete? Uh, yes, I was. I was in the Navy. And when you got out of the uniform, I was in the Air Force and Reserve for six years, the last time I took the uniform off, I said, I don't ever want to put this back on again. Right. And it strikes me as, as odd, to say the very least, that there are some seemingly intelligent people running around in uniforms, in camouflage, in our country on weekends, shooting at stuff. Well, it's, it's beyond that even. I mean, if you're shooting at uh, something that you're going to eat that night on your table, that's one thing. Uh, but there's a, there's a precedent in this century that, to me, gives me the greatest chills about this. At the end of World War I, in Germany, great groups of these idiots went marching all around in the woods began to form what they called the Fry Corps, which became, by 1923, only a few years later, the, the beginning of the SA, which evolved later on into the SS. Uh, there is a great potential for real serious fascist terror in this country. And I don't use words like fascist easily. These people are crazy. They hate the government of the United States. They've demonstrated that. 
Uh, they, they don't want to be citizens like anyone else. They don't want to pay taxes. They've made a cult out of Waco. And I think they're very, very dangerous people, and we shouldn't just uh, uh, brush them off as if they were a bunch of goofballs on the weekend. But, Pete, what makes these people in such hatred of the government of the United States? What is it that drives them? You know, there are things about the government that I don't care about. There are sometimes I don't care about paying my taxes. I really wish the government wouldn't decide whether or not I could put certain posters up on my wall in my office or not. But I still live a relatively happy life. I love being a citizen of this country, and I don't want to destroy my government. So where is it that these people get the idea that they are up against this terrible monster bent on marching us down, as I heard one man say on 60 Minutes last night, down into pits and executing us at the point of a gun? Uh, it, it's obviously so absolutely irrational. I mean, for example, the same show or, or one of the others said that they believed that Boutros Boutros Ghali was about to take over the United States in the name of the UN. <laughs> Boutros Boutros Ghali couldn't take over the Four Seasons. Uh, never mind take over the United States, but these people with this crazy paranoia and this basic ideology of resentment, they define themselves by what they're against and what they hate. They are not for anything. They talk vaguely, there's one group, uh, that obviously has a, a Christian ideology. There's another group that seems more pagan, uh, but they, it, they define themselves by what they hate, and what they hate includes uh, not simply the government of the United States, but Jews, uh, black people, Latinos, immigrants. These are dangerous people because they're unhappy. They are the most unhappy people in this country. You just said you, you live a happy life. Right. I live a, reason, a reasonably happy right. life. Right right and the country somebody has to pay for the highways and somebody has to pay for the cops and guess who it is pal it's you and me and all the rest exactly and these people would like to have a utopia where you pay no taxes and you can go out and shoot guns all around the place and make loud noise what about the influence and there was a lot of talk about this uh, on radio today uh, and over the weekend the influence of talk radio on the mindset of somebody who truly believes in his or her perception and paranoia that the government of the USA is out to get them. Well, I, I mean, let's face it, there, and I'm not talking now about just people who are in militia, but there are people in this country of lesser mentality, let's face it, who respond to the dark side of every equation. Are they being fueled by these talk radio sh uh, uh, show hosts who are forever carping at the Democrats in Washington, the government of the United States, all local government, that government is something we have to be suspicious and wary of at all times? Well, I think they've really feeding it. I think they've, the, the development of this kind of hate talk radio over the last three or four years, and I'm not talking about Limbaugh particularly. The Limbaugh is Henry James compared to some of these other guys. If you got in a car and drove from New York to, to California, you would never be out of the range of some guy who's feeding this and talking about how tough he is. Don't come to my door, I'll blow you away. People like G. Gordon Liddy, for example. Uh, are polluting the airways with this stuff, and it does have an effect. Remember, the, 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 you get a gun license in this country if you don't have a criminal record. There's nothing in there about how stupid you are. There's no uh, bounds at all on what you might potentially do with that gun. Or how susceptible you are to people suggesting that there's a use for the weapon that you have in your possession. Pete, uh -huh. I've got to do a commercial real fast. Sure. Back with Pete Hamill and your phone calls at 800-952-2788 after a short timeout.